Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where for our ritual today, we are going to be uh, attempting a puzzle called Eye of Agamotto by Allergem. Um, and yeah, this, I mean, this is a startling grid, to me at least. I mean, these are the, these are the strange things that I find startling. Apologies for anybody out there who's ever met me in real life and who, who I've bored at a party. Um, but this grid is completely rotationally symmetrical, by which I mean if we rotate it 180 degrees around this the, its central point, we would get the identical grid. Um, now, my, <laughs> now, my knowledge of girth symmetrical placement suggests to me, therefore, that the solution to this puzzle is going to be rotationally symmetrical. Um, but we shall see whether that indeed turns out to be true. But anyway, this is this is really very beautiful. It's just German whispers, 159. So we've got um, indexing, the computer programmer's favorite rule set. Um, and that's it. And I, and I even know... No, I can't claim to really know what the Eye of Agamotto is. I think it's something to do with Doctor Strange. It might be the thing that Doctor Strange has on his chest. Um, beyond that, <laughs> I don't know. And what I all... Yeah, is, is this... And there, there should really be a pupil to that eye, shouldn't there? Yeah, but well, anyway, I don't know. So pe people out there will have to explain to me all about the eye of Agamotto and what it means and how it's uh, symbolically represented accurately in Allergem's puzzle. Um, but we're going to have a look at this in a moment or two and I will read you the rules properly. But I have some announcements before that, some big announcements. Next week is the new gas app. We're going to be releasing a new pack of gas puzzles for you. And this I know this will be music to many of your many of your ears uh, and the m mellifluousness of it is is quite quite extreme um so gas for those of you who don't know is the genuinely approachable sudoku that is published every day over on our discord server so every day we have a, there's a team of authors um clover uh, bill murphy and um philip um, um, Philip Newman are currently the authors. It used to be Sam as well, Sam Kaplan Lines. Um, and basically they produce every day, it's completely free, you can just go on to Discord and you can download that day's gas puzzle and try it for yourselves. And the idea is that it introduces you to this wonderful universe, uh, not a Marvel universe, well it is a marvellous universe, um, of, of variant Sudoku. These puzzles are not meant to be you know, breathtakingly hard, but they are meant to be a great way to learn how to do these puzzles and to improve at them. And they've been going for what must be a couple of years now, I think. Um, and we released um, we released a pack of these puzzles as a gas app, uh, probably about a year ago, I would guess. And it was it's been very popular. People like like solving uh, gas puzzles more more than the daily share. So so that those that gas app did very well. And lots of you said, "Can we have another gas app?" Yes, you can. Next week there's going to be a new gas app filled with I think it's sixty puzzles. Um, and so check that out. Um, it's available. It'll be available for download um, as a pack. A pack of puzzles from our basic app um, and the basic app is free to download so just find that go to the gas go to well go to however you download a new pack don't ask me how to do that that's technical um, but it, I think it's meant to be very very straightforward and next week it's coming so look out for that it's going to be cool um, now speaking of cool things Jacqueline it's your birthday today I think I'm right, aren't I? I know this because your boyfriend, Zach, wrote to us a very nice email indeed. So thank you for that, Zach and Jacqueline. We hope you have a brilliant day. And then Jocelyn, down there in Queensland, Australia, your dear friend Nikki wrote to us. And I know Nikki's in the US, um, but she said that you would appreciate a shout out today. So Jocelyn, happy birthday. And I'm told you're a big fan of chocolate cake, as am I. So I hope that you you get an appropriately enormous cake with the correct, obviously, ratio of icing on it. One to one cake to icing, of course. And then Viviana, 
You have turned 31 today, and I know this because your partner Jose wrote to us, and I think that Viviana is down in the Patagonian part of Chile. I mean, that is just fantastic. It's, it's amazing. I mean, um, it is amazing. The, the, the places people watch Cracking the Cryptic from, it, it really does... Uh, brings a tear to your eye. Anyway, what else can I tell you about? Well, lots of you have been solving Alice's Adventures in Sudoku Land, which is our Patreon reward for March. Um, it has been garnering amazing plaudits, so do check it out if you haven't, haven't had a chance to look at it already. The following people solved all 12 puzzles. Well done to James Scheibel, Stephen Lee, Matt Bernardina, Chris, oh sorry, Stephen, Chris O'Malis, Scott Wigington, Mako Shirasawa, and Mako, I think, is in Japan. So that's another remote place. Um, well, I know Japan is a big country, obviously, but to watch um, English videos in Japan, I don't know how easy that is and how common it is, but I am delighted, Mako, that you join us from there. Um, Nora Hamacha, Scott Murdoch, Vincent Kwok, Amit Aya, Jake Kapitz, uh, Juha Matti Heikkonen, uh, Vina Van Hazen, Chris Deeks, Queen of Roses, Cussy, John Gemmel, and Brother Squirrel from the Holy Walnut Order. I can't, I mean, Brother Squirrel, your, your pseudonym has become so long that it would take me about six months, well, not six months, but it would take me about a minute to read it out now. So Brother Squirrel from the Holy Walnut. He solved all the puzzles as well. Now, let's have a look at the eye of Agamotto and let's, let's see what Allergem. I think this might be a, a debut on the channel for Allergem. I'm not sure about that, but I think so. Um, and these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Adjacent digits along a green line must differ by at least five. So if that digit there was a, I don't know, a two, uh, this digit here would have to be at least five different from two. So it would have to be seven, eight or nine. That's how it would work. Imagine it was this one was nine, then this one would have to be at least five different from nine. So it would have to be four, three, in theory, two, although there's a two in the row, or one. That's how green lines work. Now, how do these red columns work? Well, this is the famous 159 indexing. A digit in column one indicates the column in which the digit one appears in that row. Columns five and nine have the same rule for the digits five and nine respectively. Thankfully, there's an example because if you're anything like I was when I first uh, read the 159 rule, I was like, what? Um, Mavericks, Mavericks flying past. Hello, Maverick. Um, for example, an eight in row seven, column one, uh, tells you that there is a one in row seven, column eight one in row seven column eight so there and a three in row two column five tells you there is a five in row two column three row two column three okay so let's think about why that is so column one we're told indexes the position of the one in all of these various rows so we come to this square we see it's got an eight in it so that is telling us that the one in this row is in the eighth column which is there Hence, this is a one. So it's very, it's fairly straightforward once you get your head around it. This column indexes fives. So a three in this row tells us that the five in this row is in the third column, which is why it's there. So that's how the indexing works. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I'm tempted to just download upon you a whole truckload of secrets because there are there are secrets to the 159 indexing rules and there are secrets to German whispers lines or the green lines let's let's start off with the secrets of the green lines <laughs> and then we'll move on to the secrets of the of the red columns so green lines Firstly, let's start with, can we put five on them? The answer is no, no, you cannot. Because if you do try and put five on a green line, the next digit becomes impossible because it needs to be five different, at least from five. If we go downwards, we'll get to zero or lower. And if we go upwards, we get to 10 or higher. 
they are not valid Sudoku digits. So you can never put five on a green line. Now that means that what happens as you move along green lines is you alternate high and low either side of five. So if, imagine that was a low digit. Now this next digit now has to be the other side of five from the low digits one, two, three, and four. It would have to be six, seven, eight, or nine. And then this digit would flip back down the other side again. And that pattern will continue along the green line forever. So there's oscillating polarity along green lines. Now there are other secrets about green lines. For example, can you put four in the middle of a green line or six in the middle of green, a green line? And that's very difficult because well, it's impossible in a straight green line like this because four and six are very monogamous digits. They only have one green line partner and they basically bond with that one for life. So if you do put four on a green line, the only digit that the four is prepared to be next to is the nine. And so you can see that you would run into trouble along this line unless you were to put the four at the end of the line where it could partner quite happily with its monogamous friend, the nine. Well, no, I can't describe the nine as a monogamous digit. That is very much not. That is a, a, a polygamous digit. The nine likes to mate with anything, basically. It will, it will be friends with the ones, the twos, the threes, and the fours. But the fours are faithful to the nines only. So those are all the secrets of green lines. We will wonder about what that means in a moment or two, but basically what I think we're going to have to do is to shade them using some sort of alternating pattern. Now, what about the columns? Can we say anything about the columns? Well, yes, there is one profound secret um, that I've learned over the years about red columns. And that is, let's look at these three cells down here and think about them because they exhibit a sort of entropy by which I mean one of these digits has to be selected from the digits one, two, and three. One of these digits has to be selected from the digits four, five, and six. And one of these digits has to be selected from the digits seven, eight, and nine. And if you think it's fairly obvious why that's the case once you think about it. Um, but it's not it's not perhaps obvious at the start of a puzzle like this. Um, so the way to see that is to try and what if we were to try and put two low digits in here? So imagine this square here was a two and that square there was a three. So now it's not possible for us to put one of each entropy into these three cells because we've got two low digits in. And you can immediately see why there's a problem because this two is telling us to put a one here in the second column and that three is telling us to put a one there in the third column and we would have two ones in box seven, which doesn't work. So basically, because we need to space out the ones, we need to put one one in there, one one in there and one one in there in the final three rows of the grid, we're going to have to have one of these that's one, two, or three, one of these, these is four, five, six, one of these is seven, eight, nine. So I suspect we have to start with this, this line here and perhaps this line here because we can actually say something immediately. Yeah, okay, about using that pattern that we've just identified down here, we can, we, we can identify which of these is the middly digit. Which one of these can be the four, five, or six? Well, we can't put five on the line, so the question then becomes, which one of these is the four or the six? Remembering they're monogamous, and we can't put them in the middle of a line, because if we do, we're going to have two nines or two ones if we go for sixes. Well, the only place we can put a four or a six on this line is there. So that's a four or a six straight off the bat. Therefore, this is is the uh, the partner of a four or a six, which is a one or a nine, ah, which we don't. So we don't know if that's high or low. So if this is six, this is one. Uh, and then that would be high and would be seven, eight or nine. But if that's four and that's nine, that would be low and would be one, two or three. So that's very, this digit is very unrestricted. But this, right, okay, but this four or six is telling us that the one in this row is in either this space or this space. It's either in the fourth column or the sixth column. 
but what the place we really want it to be is here because that's going to determine the the polarity if you like of this green line which is always what we're trying to do yeah okay now the other thing the other secret about this puzzle which i alluded to in in the introduction to it is that it, because it's so symmetrical every time we tr we we get any sort of logic done in any part of the grid we need to think about the rotationally symmetrical cells and can we apply the logic there so the rotationally symmetrical counterpart to this because the puzzle is 180 degrees rotationally symmetrical is there so we can apply exactly that logic to this line can't we that's got to be the four or the six along it oopsie ah. therefore that's a one or a nine i can see that's giving me a one nine pair in row five this square is indexing nines because that's what this column does so we've got a nine in one of those two squares um So these are sort of, well, they're a pair. If that was one, that's referencing itself and that will make that nine referencing itself. And if that's nine, that's saying put a one in column nine and that would go there. And this one would be saying put a nine in column one where there would be one. So that sort of works. Okay, all right, so maybe this isn't where you're meant to start. That's really surprising. Um, sorry, let me just think about this for a moment or two. I can see five in the top row has to be over there because it can't be on a green line. Yeah, okay, let's... Ooh, hang on yeah no that's beautiful that's ah that's it isn't it that's it right where in the top row is five because it can't go on a green line it has to live over there but then what's that square that square remember is indexing the five in this row which we now know is in column seven column eight or column nine that means that square is seven eight or nine and that gives us the polarity of the whisper line because we know it must alternate so these squares have got to be all high polarity we can't put six in the middle of a line or we get two ones because they're monogamous six is monogamous um these squares have got to be low we can't put four in the middle of the line Uh, the, uh, okay, that digit, which is indexing the one, remember, is telling us there is a one in one of those four cells. Therefore, there is not a one in those cells, which become a two, three pair. That, therefore, is not a two or a three. That can't be a six anymore, because it would need to be next to a one. And we know the one is over here. So now I've got a seven, eight, nine triple. And that means, um, well, I've not put a six in any of those squares. So six is also living with its friend, the five over here. Oh, come on. This, this is definitely doing something. I've just got to figure out what it is. You can't put a seven here because on one side of it there's going to be a three and seven and three are not five apart so this square has become eight or nine this square oh well hang on that can't be a four because that would have to be no sorry hang on what am i talking about i'm going mad that can be a four because that can be a nine sorry i was about to go um about to go crazy um so that's seven eight or nine if that's seven it would have to be surrounded by one and two. Oh, but hang on oh i see that's no it's right it's not that digit it's actually that digit that's the key one now because that being seven, eight or nine, not being able to be six, 
throws the one over there into one of those columns because that's what that's indicating. So that's become a one, five, six triple. And that means this is a four. And therefore that's a nine because four is monogamous. This is an eight because it has to be by pencil marking. That's a seven, which can't be next to three. And that's actually done six cells at the top row, absolutely out of nowhere. Um, the nine is now indexing the five. So that's the five. The seven is indexing the one. <laughs> Look, it's the whole thing's done. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. And this is so exciting because we should just be able to do this down here in a minute. Um, but let's just pause and check. Have we done everything that we're meant to be able to do? Does it resolve any of this stuff? don't know. I don't think so. Um, presumably, though, I'm wondering whether we can now say something more profound about this sticky outy cell on this green line. Because if that was high, say this was a 9, then this would have to be high in German whispers language, which means six, seven, eight or nine, but it couldn't be um, it couldn't be a seven, eight or a nine because well, because of the rule about these having to be entropic. Actually, if that was nine, it couldn't be a seven, eight or a nine by Sudoku either. So if that's nine, that is six and that is definitely one. nine six she's putting a one here and that's a four which is putting a one here i can't quite see a problem actually maybe i'm maybe that's not where i meant to look Let, let's do the bottom of the grid now because that that must be hanging mustn't it so how did we do the top of the grid what we did was we said where's five so let's try that down there. Five must be in one of these cells, which means this digit has to be a one, two, or a three. So now we know the polarity of this line. We can't put four in the middle of it. So it looks something like this. Um, this is telling us that nine is in one of those cells. Why don't we just pencil mark that for a moment or two so we can try and remember that. And we know those gapped cells are now on the high side of five. So these are six, seven, eight or nine. Those two now can't be nine. These two could never be six because they would obviously be in the middle of the line and have to be surrounded by double one. So they become seven and eight. That becomes six or nine. Um, now, what we were able to do up there, if I recall correctly, was we were able to say that this digit had to be a seven, eight or a nine. So I ought to be able to say, yes, now I can. That digit cannot be a four and it can't be a four um, because that seems to only be able to be seven or eight. So that becomes one, two and three. Nine comes out of this square, which makes it a six. That must be next to one on the line. Um, that's doing some sort of stuff well this is indexing the five which must now live in this square uh we can't make that a three because it will be next to seven on one side of it so that must be two by sudoku that's three in the corner that's three in the spotlight losing its religion um Look, and we've done this line almost as well. We've got four and nine to put in here, but, but the three is indexing the nine. So the nine goes there, that becomes a four. Five is indexing the one. The one is indexing the five. So those are sort of self-referential. And we end up here. And that means what exactly? Well, one thing it means is let's look at those three digits and ask what is the low digit that's got to appear in one of those two squares? Well, it's got to be a one, two or a three. By Sudoku, therefore, it's a two. So there is a two in one of those for the low entropy 
digit that the 5 needs to index it, which means there is a 5 in one of those squares. Now there is a 5 in one of those squares by Sudoku, and 5 can't go on a green line. So that's become a 5, which means that square is now a 3, because it needs to be indexed. And I bet this should work down here with, it does, doesn't it? Down here, we need one of these digits to be a 7, 8, or a 9. So it's going to be an 8, which is going to index a 5 over here, which means this now becomes a 5. That's in the 7th column, so that becomes a 7. This square is now midly entropy, so it's got to be 4, 5, or 6. And this is all using the secret we talked about at the start there, which means 5, oh, okay, so that means 5 by Sudoku is in one of those squares. Now, okay, has that rather beautiful logic that Allergem has built into their puzzle, has it allowed us to do anything anything even more profound. Let me think about this. Well, yes, I can see one thing down here. I can ask where one goes in box nine. And the, the answer to that is it goes with the five. Because we can't put one into this domino, because then there would be two low digits here. And that would put two nines in box seven, which it would be a bad thing. So the one must go in those squares. Which means, look, that there is a 1 in this domino. And we know there's a 1 in that domino. Right, that's done it. There we go. So this is a 1, which means that's a 6 by oscillation. Uh, this is now a high digit, which has got to be a 7, 8, or a 9. And that's got to be a low digit, but, uh, as in lower on the low side of 5. So it's got to be 2, 3, or 4, and by elimination it is a 4 which means that is a 9 because 4 is monogamous and I've no idea what this has done from a, um, a German whispers sorry a, um, a 9 indexing perspective but that 6 seems to suggest that's a 9 this is so cool this is so cool because that this is going to do that line and bear in mind that all this logic over here is going to be repeatable in these cells and it's going to give us the polarity of this line so I think we are I don't know if I dare say that, but I think we are potentially closing in on a solution here. That 4 must put a 9 here by, by indexing. That has become a 9, so that must be a 4, which is indexing a 1. So now we, we have got the polarity of this line. Th this should be a 5-9 pair, yes, because of the secret here. We can't put a 9 in this domino because there's already a 7, which is a high digit in the entropy of there. So this becomes 5, 9, uh, which actually doesn't take us forward much further. This square's got to be low. It must be 1, 2, or 3. Sort of feel like we must be able to do that. I'm looking at the equivalent digit, so we're expecting this to be a 1 by symmetry because the 9s and the 1s are clearly rotationally symmetrical. Uh, but that's got to be a 6. Oh, there, there, that, that, does, that does it, look. Because that has to be high from a German whispers perspective, but can't be 7, 8, or 9. So that's 6, which is monogamous. So that places the 1. And therefore, well, what about those digits? Maybe we can just do simple Sudoku. Yes. Yes, that's a 1, 4 pair by simple Sudoku which means this square is a 3. So, th and 3 index is the 1, so that just instantly resolves that. Um, okay, let's have a look down here. We need 2s and 8s. Can I do that? 2 and 8. Which means there's a 1 in one of these by indexing, and there's a 1 in, in one of those, which we've already got by indexing. Okay, so that's all great. And presumably, we can apply all of that logic as well over here. So how did we do that? Yeah, that's got to be a 6-9 pair. In fact, that's resolved on this side by this digit. 
So I should be able to get that digit, and I can using this. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's a 6-9 pair, which must be in that order. And that square there has got to be a 7, which is indexing this. Okay. I don't know why I'm trying to do this so much by symmetry. It just appeals to me for some reason. Um, now, have we got any asymmetrical digits now in this grid? I don't think we've got... I don't think there are many. Um, those squares there have got to be a 2-8 pair, which is not resolved. Oh, hang on, I flicked uh, inadvertently to letters. Uh, 8 is telling us there is a 9 in one of those squares, which we could have seen by Sudoku. And I suspect what we're now, in what we're now intended to do is to note the polarity of the, of the eye itself and try and use that. This has got to be a low, lower on the low side of 5, so it's got to be 3 or 4. Uh, by Sudoku, it can't be one or two. Hmm, I don't know if I can resolve that digit. That's got to be low. Oh, that's it. This is given. It sees one, three, and four, so that's got to be two. That's indexing the five, I see. So that becomes five, that becomes nine. Therefore, that becomes nine. In this box, we've not put three, four, and seven in. So I can place the three by Sudoku. And I get a four seven. Oh, that's given. Look, it's all it's all resolving. It is all resolving. That's become an eight. Um, let's keep going along this line because that was proving very productive. In fact, look, it's it's all done. It's all just getting done. Two seven works from a whispers perspective. Uh, this square has got to be low, and is a two or a three. It can't be three. It would be too close to seven. So that's got to be a two. I'm totally losing track of which, um, you know, which digits I have I have properly indexed in these columns. I suppose from an entropy perspective, this is middly, which means it's a five or a six, and that that means that there's a five in one of those two squares using the power of entropy. Um, this box needs five, six, and eight. So this square must be an 8, because it can't be a 6 and it can't be a 5. So that is an 8, which means that seems to be an 8 by the power of Sudoku. Um, what about that digit then? That's got to be high and is 6 or 7. I don't know if, don't know if that's done or not. I think that's the same problem, isn't it, that I have with that digit. So why don't instead we try this cell? which has got to be high, and that is 8, because it sees 6, 7, and 9, which does the 8 and the 2 this side. The 2 is indexing the 1. This needs to have 3, 4, and 7 in it. Oh, no, it doesn't. Not 4. 3, 6, and 7. Okay, so 7 goes here using that. That places the 6. Does that. Does that. This is one, this is five. Ah, oh, this is, I mean, it's just stunning. It's absolutely stunning. These squares are two, four, and five. Ah, I can't, I can't see a, a swift way of resolving that. Maybe I can use the five now. Where's that going? The five is not going in that position, so that can't be a two. So the five is in one of those squares. So this is not the five and that's a four. So this is a two. This is a four, five pair. This column needs six and five into it. That square can't be the five. So that's the six, that's the five, that's the six by indexing. Um, these squares have got to be, well, that's this has got to be the two in this box. So it's not the five, so that can't be the four. So that fixes all of this. This becomes a four, that becomes a five. We need three and eight over there. So eight goes here, three goes there, two and seven here, seven goes there, three goes there. What a beautiful puzzle. That is just simply stunning. The eye of Agamotto. Oh, and let's just check that my, my suspicion 
is that this will this is a rotation symmetrical solution so if we take these corners you can see the three in the corner is mapping to a seven on rotational symmetry so i expect all the threes and sevens to be rotationally symmetrical um, and they are that three so you can see that because the clues because the presented clues were rotationally symmetrical and the puzzle has a unique solution which it did we've proved that we've solved it um, that solution must exhibit symmetry as well that is girth symmetrical placement there's all sorts of videos we've done on the channel about that and one uh, I want to say there's a video on patreon as well by Matt Boyack which is worth checking out which is a really beautiful sort of exposition of this sort of logic um, let's try another digit six is our mapping to fours apparently so we should see that six should be a four and it is so sixes and fours it's going to be ones nines five should map to themselves let's check that there we go fives are mapping to themselves <laughs> isn't that pretty wow just a beautiful puzzle i hope you had a go at that one because well i'm going to say it felt approachable but that's not fair at all is it the reason this is approachable is because i have an absolute boatload of experience doing a german whispers puzzles and b 159 puzzles so there were a lot of secrets i needed to know secrets that weren't actually imparted to me by the eye of agamotto but by by my own sudoku obsessions um, and i think knowing those secrets obviously was massively powerful because i could use ent entropy on these these things i could use knowledge about how green lines had to develop and that all made it a rather joyful experience for me let me know how you got on in the comments i enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic